gentlemen, ladies, all of the above, none of the above, shop teachers of all creeds and colors, welcome back to the shop. Fella asked on the previous Gagia video how I was going to find all these tiny little cracks. I thought he was leading into a joke about Dickie Mountbatten, Prince Philip, and King Chuckles the Third vacationing on Corfu. And then I realized, that shit ain't funny. That jug-eared goof's going to be jangling through my kid's piggy bank soon enough. Enough to set you off your tea and crumpets, huh? What the fellow was driving out was NDT, non-destructive testing, in order to find teeny tiny little cracks. That little teeny tiny crack ain't so teeny tiny. However, we don't know if the other size is compromised or not. So how could we possibly find cracks? Well, there's a device called a Magnaflux, which is a name brand. It's essentially, it's a magnetic yoke. And it can be AC or DC. And they put it up there and then they sell this consumable dust and the dust happens to be iron powder. So it works very well for ferrous cracks. And I'll show you how it works. We got a contiguous piece of steel and we put a magnet on it. And then we put some magical pixie dust off of the... It doesn't really stick all that well. That's because the magnetic flux is going through the high permeability magnetic permeability steel and it's not going through the air so it doesn't really stick all that well however if you have a crack now make it pretend this is one piece of steel I know it's two but bear with me what happens is now that the magnetic flux has to jump this gap there develops a north pole and a south pole and if we put some powder on there and it sticks real good. And if there's a, the remotest separation, you can see it piles up. All around that crack. You see that? This is texture enhanced for her pleasure. But that's the way the magnetic Magnaflux works. We don't have one of those machines we don't need one of those machines because we got a cheaper option. Magnaflux, it's off patent now, so they're living on in infamy via their name. But from the Princess Auto, five bucks. Die penetrant test. So we'll just give her a little hoot of the good stuff, known by the state of cancer to cause California. Wash off any coffee oils left over. So this here is the penetrant, and as I say, from the Princess Auto Power Fister off-brand, quite cheap. Pro tip, just stick the tip of it in and see what happens. You're talking about penetrant, a little dabble do you on account of it stays wet. It's got the perfect conjunct, con conjugal properties. <laughs> a little dabble do you. Now we wipe down all the excess what we can see. You don't want any kind of Klingon on there. Our cardinal rule of the shop, we do not fuck with pressure vessels. Lest we reenact the great Blackwater tank fiasco of Ot 16. <laughs> Poor baby doll. Got in there like a dirty shirt. Got the new RV. Wanted to get right in there and mix it up. And the dirty bastards, well, surprise to me. And especially to my darling wife, the dirty bastards at the RV dealership didn't put the gear clamp on properly on the dump hose. Go ahead, baby doll, get right in there, get your head in there and yard on that gate valve as hard as you can. <laughs> Sploosh! There was corn niblets and fucking tampons everywhere. That's the last time baby doll ever pulled that lever. Now we give the developer a rattle. This is like that stuff you put in the window at Christmas, the fake snow. It's like a real crusty paint. Powdery. The developer takes about a minute to flash off and anywhere there's a reservoir of that dye, didn't dry, you will find 
shows up red. So the cracks, plain as day. So we got trouble on the outboard port side and starboard, pretty clean. You'll note it's also showing up on the heating element, but that's because that's a reservoir for the dye. So that non-destructive dye penetrant test is very cheap and very effective at locating tiny little cracks. We had no, we, we saw this big huge one. We had no idea that the earlet was also cracked. Now to enact the repair, the easy way is to buy this part. Turns out it's but 35 Kanaki Stan Kopex uh, from the usual scumbag. So I'm not going to spend too much time. Some fellas had suggested that I TIG weld it and I'm not going to do that because one, it won't work. This is high silica cast aluminum, which is just a right whore to weld. You need the AC TIG uh, alternating current, which I do have. However, I'm not set up for it. So I'm not going to spend half the day friggin' and farting around uh, to save myself a $35 part, which I know will be good. And I'm not sure that the repair will be good. So there's, you know, I'm not one to dissuade you from fingering it out on your own that it ain't going to work, especially the first couple hundred times you do it. So you go ahead and bang your head against the wall. But I know from experience, heuristically, that it ain't going to fucking work. Some people are able to learn from other people's mistakes. I'm dumber. I got to learn from my own mistakes. But learn I did and I ain't TIG welding this. I will, however, consider a two-part inert epoxy, flavorless. However, we have to make sure that it's not cracked all the way through. That it was the O-ring popping off because of this thing hogging out. So what we'll do is more of the same. Aha! We got some blood red mermaids flagging us. Danger! So I ask you, were you in my position, fellows? What would you do? Throw it right in the fucking bucket, of course, because this is a pressurized vessel and it's not just air. If it leaks out, psh, no big deal. It's 90 dungree science, well, steam. You do not fuck with steam, especially on your kitchen counter, baby doll, and so forth. So this goes right in the fucking bucket, and I pony up for a new part. No big deal. Well, actually, this is the dew clause. I got the same one. No accounting for some tastes. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.